So we bought this large collection and I had to do the video in three parts so that it's manageable because the video is probably going to be over an hour long total. So I'll split it up into threes. That way you can watch it on your own time and watch the first part, third, second part, and the third part. But you don't want to miss this video. There's a lot of neat coins in here, a lot of better than average. And the third video, we're going to look through some mystery type boxes. So you don't want to miss the third one for sure. But the other two are going to be nice as well because a lot of good coins to be looking at. So the first one's going to be the albums and talking about what's in the collection. The second one was going is going to be about the graded coins. And then, of course, the third one, I just described it. So let's get started. I purchased another large collection. They drove in four hours, I believe it was. And a lot of this is U.S. Mint uh, issue stuff like proof sets and mint sets and silver eagles and things like that. Uh, that was the bulk of it as far as the weight and, and the boxes. But there was a lot of nice stuff. And we're going to look at a few things. But here's the boxes. Um, it, you know, it's not as big as you think. I mean, I understand. It, it's just that mint stuff takes up a lot of room and so does these albums. So it's not like it's, you know, boxes and boxes of carded coins. That's worth tens of thousands of dollars. You know, like I said, it's it's a lot of proof sets, and we're not going to look at all of them there, but we do have them up on the site if you're interested. Here's actually a silver set. That's kind of cool. A 1954. So that's one of your better sets right there. So there was a couple of decent sets like that in there. Then we had a 1900 coin set. There might be a handful that I'll send off. I think I saw about five coins and that Barbara Half might be one of them. Uh, there might be some annex emissions here. Uh, they're not worth a whole lot, but they're worth enough to send the annex because of their cheaper uh, grading fees. And they actually have a pretty good turnover right now. I have to say that, but these are really beautiful sets. Now, this is actually a proof set, but there's some here that say proof set and they're not. But this is what's funny. This one here says 1950 proof set. The only one that's proof is the 1950 nickel. So it's not an old proof. That can fool somebody. I can fool a new collector. So you have to watch out for that. And then here's another. And this is really nice. The 25, I mean, you don't see buffaloes that nice very often from 1925. And this standing quarter might be worthy. The thing is it, it might have been a little clean, I'm not sure, but it might still be worth trying. Still might be worth sending off. I'll have to take a closer look at some of them. Then here's another one. And what's surprising about this set is that yes, they're toned from the cardboard and it's a little dirty, the glass is. But there are some nice coins in here that might be cherry picked too. So out of these, these are the ones that I might pick a couple and try to send them off and see what happens. If I gotta get them out of these holders, check them out real close. I'm not sure if they'll artificial tone this. Probably not though. I mean, it looks really nice. Looks like you call this accidental cardboard type toning, <laughs> influenced by the cardboard. Then here is another mini type set. And this one has just your normal coins in it. Um, I didn't say anything real special. I, I, I know this Barber quarter is really nice as far as details are concerned, but it's got some issues. I think that's on the holder, but no, it's actually on the coin. Okay. So let's do this. When we're going through this, this some of these coins here, three of us were working on this collection. I was organizing it, putting it together so that, because I, one does a certain thing, uh, another, like Andy does another thing, employees that I have here, so that we're all working on one aspect, like one's working on the modern stuff, one's working on the graded stuff, one's working on the ungraded, and typically I usually do the ungraded stuff, 
This is something I thought was really neat, and I'm going to keep it like it is. Yes, they probably paid a little more than what they should have, being from Littleton, but I thought this was a really cool set, Western Saloons. Now, as you're looking at this, we do have an order number on our website, and we have an email. It's porchmancoinshop at gmail.com, and like I said, the, the phone number for orders is on the website as well. If you are interested in something you see, please give contact us. This stuff to me, some of it, is worthy of someone putting in their collection. It's no different than the World War II sets. I did a members video for that. Those World War II sets, they're, they're worthy of someone getting them and not breaking them up and just taking the silver out. So here's some loose uh, plated coins. Painted, one of them is. Gold plated. It tells you exactly what's the hologram. I mean, it's something that you pay too much for when you buy it from the company that made it. But aftermarket, this is something that I can put up at auction and you can pay what you want for it. And we've got uh, several of them here. So it's not something I recommend it as a, an investment, but as a collector's item, if you think it's cool and you want it in your collection, maybe get your kids interested in it because it looks cool, you know. Then there was, let's see, boxes with, um, <laughs> I mean, I don't usually show this kind of stuff, but it, they brought their supplies too. Bought a microscope. I can show you that as well. Uh, here's some currency, uh, just a $2 bills and some world currency. Uh, not so much, they're not worth a lot of money, but uh, just stuff that we will you know, put up for auction and maybe put up at lots. There's some fake Civil War, and you know that it's fake because the paper is aged. It's, it's really uh, thick, or not say thick, but stiff paper. So, But there's just little things like that in here that, you know, bags of foreign, there's a little bit of silver in that bag. I can see one silver coin anyway. But most of it's just, you know, a handful for a dollar, you know, dollar a pound or something like that. Um, but it was fun to go through this. Uh, here's something here. Uh, it's mostly foreign, I think, in this bag here. Yeah, just foreign pesos. Not much in that box. But here's something that I thought was really cool. Hever Castle. And so it says, 1997 UK Brilliant Uncirculated Coin for England. So that's, that's and his wives. <laughs> oh my goodness. So we can look at some of these with the albums in them. I have a lot of these like America the Beautiful. Uh, it's the 2010 to 2021. And that's just your quarters that i mean there's a premium for a little small premium and all together as a collection it, it has a premium but single coins like these typically are it's still in circulation so not worth a whole lot there then here's the the 68 through 98 so there's no silver there it's not complete we have Morgan Dollar albums. When I see those and I feel them and I can tell they got coins in them, that gets me really excited because I'm really cool with those. <laughs> I really like those. So here is the Washington Quarters. There were some nice ones in here. There might be a couple of them that I could submit, maybe, and we'll have to see. Not anything extremely valuable, but it's nice to see the 32... A D and the 32S been a little above average. I think the 32S might might be a little clean. Not sure there on that one. When you're going through the plastic and you're going through all these, um, you don't always catch every little thing, but you try to. But those are nice quarters. Nice little set there. So I'm like a little Jimmy. So the only thing about those 
these holders here is this. It's an odd shape. But anyways, we can take a look at some of the Morgans here. 92 cc is a 93 in there, 93 O. So that's good dates. 92 S is better in the higher grades. But not a lot of uh, key dates, just a few semi-key dates. A 96 S is not too bad. Um, really needs to be higher grade. But you have some nice coins in here and then some clean coins, 99 S, 98 S. Some of your better S grades here. Some of your better S dates, San Francisco. And you got to make sure that you're not seeing the coin underneath and that it's filling a hole that's not filled. Because a 1901S is worth some money, but you got to make sure that's not what it is. That's something that has happened to me, believe it or not. It has happened. So the people who sold this, this collection started watching my videos and decided I was going to be the person to handle it. And I am privileged for that. There were very nice people. Glad to meet them. They were very patient with us as we went through it. It took us a, a few hours to do all this and try to make, make it right as going through everything and, and looking at everything. Um, like I said, that there was a lot of nice coins with a lot of common coins, but you want to make sure you're looking through every little thing, looking for anything that's possible, anything that might be in here that might be worth a little more than usual because your 86S is better, your 86 O's is better, uh, your 85S that's been cleaned but they were really nice coins you always like to see these sets morgan dollars i do love to see them filled up they know 89 cc there but as you can see no uh, there's a 91 cc a 90 cc a 91 s that's a nice 91 s so there were uh uh, Jefferson Nichols, uh, 1938 to 75, the presidential dollars. There were some empty albums, brand new, still in the... Because he wasn't done. He wasn't finished with his the collecting, but um, he passed away before he could continue. There was um, some out folders here, uh, one-year collection for the Nichols, 13 to date. Uh, there were some uh, filled in here, but not all of them. And we've got another Jefferson nickel and some more. This is one year quarters, 1916. And when you are looking at this and you're a dealer or a collector and you know about coins, you see 1916 on there and a standing quarter and you're like, please let it be there. Let it be there. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was not. But there was some standing quarters, not uh, anything that was key dates, but they were there. And a lot of these fell out on us there, too. And then we have some more. This is a Kennedy half album and uh, some Lincoln cents. So you do see a lot of those come in the shop and they're just not worth that much money. I mean, they, they can be complete, but they're just common dates. You got your steel cents and all that, but they're just not worth that much money. Basically pay what a, a roll's worth. I mean, you can sell them for five bucks, maybe. Pay a couple dollars for them. There was a few of those in here and we've got a bunch of those. Uh, there was a uh, 1960 on. I mean, you could look for varieties. You could look for, you know, double dies if you if you if you want to. Uh, this is a 1939 Memorial Cent or 1959 Memorial Cent. Just it's just there's might be some nice coins, might look really nice, but doesn't mean they're worth something. Uh, here's some more albums, um, more proof sets. You had the Roosevelt dime album here. And some of them were, like I said, this is from 13 on. So you have the silver ones. You have the proof, proof silver. The U.S. Mint started producing proof silvers, proof silver coins in 1992 and continue to do that today. They stopped in 64. And, and then, of course, you've got the 76 years. But as far as dimes are concerned, that's when they started back. Uh, the Walking Liberty hat was mostly empty. There was a, a few coins in there, just in the back here. So it wasn't a lot in the way. That's the thing about these, like I said, it's got that bend in it. I don't like that very well. I like Then, like I said, we had a lot of U.S. Mint. There's some more proof sets here. Here's, I think I showed some of this already. Uh, there's just um, the United States of America, United Kingdom. That's kind of cool. Uh, there's 
some covers here. This is to commemorate, you know, like the bicentennial of the independence. They did a lot of that from 74 up to 76. And here's a set of 2019 quarters. This is all of them. It has the S and the D. So there's a lot of mint product stuff. And that was the bulk of this collection as far as weight and heft is concerned. Here's some more albums, um, more proof sets. You had the Roosevelt dime album here. And some of them were, like I said, this is from 13 on. So you have the silver ones, you have the proof, proof silver. The U.S. Mint started producing proof silvers, proof silver coins in 1992 and continue to do that today. They stopped in 64 and, and then of course you've got the 76 years, but as far as dimes are concerned, that's when they started back. So I found the companion to the one up to 2013 for the Roosevelt dimes. And this is really, you know, a nice collection. All the dimes appear to be in uncirculated condition. They are toned. But, you know, when you see toning like this, it is kind of uh, eye appealing. So I don't see anybody that would dislike that if they do like toned coins. But they're not worth a whole lot. Now, I mean, I know that they go for more if they're toned. Some people might pay a lot for some nice looking coins like that if we stuck them up for auction. We'll probably just leave the set as is and sell it. So it's all the way up to, you can see the two, uh, 2012 there. And it has all the silver proofs, has all the P, D, and S. That's what it has. Then we have the Mercury Dimes. And this one here, the first thing I look for, obviously, is the 16D. There was a coin there, but it was a 16 with no mint mark on the back. So it's a Philadelphia mint. But this is still a nice set. I mean, it has the uh, 21D and the 21. Uh, some of these are in, in really decent condition for the earlier years. The 1919S is and the 1918-18S. So this is a little better than average set that you typically see. That's, so I'll show it to you a little bit closer to the 31D and S. Could be a little bit better in the higher grades. The 26S is also another one that's uh, the higher the grade, the better. Those are condition grade coins, what we call those. But the rest of them are pretty common. But like I said, this is a, a better than average set. So it is a nice set. It's a micro S, it says. Now, I have to check the back of these. That's very important when you're doing appraisals. You got to check the back of the coins. You got to make sure that the coins, they are. Because sometimes in these folders like this, you don't know for sure. And you got to make sure. You might have a 1909S and uh, the VDB spot that's not actually a, a VDB. So these sets are go with the 41s, but they don't have all the key dates. The 11D is a semi-key date, but it's missing most of the key dates. There is, I believe, the 31S in these. Yeah, right here is the 31S. But they're pretty much complete except for the main key dates in the front. So might uh, fill those in. But every one of these, I think, are like this. It's, it just didn't complete them. Well, no, I guess there's, you know. So, you know, there's some missing in this one here, like the 22. Now, there's no 22, no D. Now, the 22 Ds, I believe. So, this one has some missing coins in it. But those can be filled in. So, this is something maybe to, to get a, a, a child started. Maybe I could give these away in the shop. I've got three of them. Coins like that, sets like that, I, I try to do, try to give away if I can, because they're not worth a whole lot, but yet they're almost complete, and and they can learn which dates they need to get. That's more important. Then the Buffalo Nickels, this one here was a complete set. Now, when you see anything with Nicodate, let me see if there's anything here. I thought I saw one when I scanned through this, but there are the key dates here. You got your 13S Variety Two is your, your main key date. It's nice. All of them look like they got the dates on them. But there was one that was Nicodet. I think it was a 16S. That just, you can see the discoloration there. That pretty much ruins the value. I mean, I know that it's a better date, uh, even if it was the main key date here. 
it's still, it just, it just knocks the value down a lot more on Buffalo nickels than normal. It's really frowned upon, even though it can be worth more. If you do have on a mound or a type two with an S and it turns out to be a 13 with a nick of date, it's still worth more, but you know, a lot of people do that. They'll take all the S's that have no date and they'll try to reveal the date on them. So it's a nice Buffalo nickel collection. A little extras there at the bottom. And we have the Franklin half dollar collection. This is a really nice collection. There are some missing proofs. But business strikes. I don't know if I have the some of these. I might be able to fill it in and complete it. But it's a nice set. It's a nice little cameo of verse on that one. 57 proof. I like the sets like this with the proofs as well. As you get all the issues, you can do a complete collection. It's, it's kind of, it's pretty affordable to be able to do that. There's not a lot of key dates. There's not any key dates. The 53S with the full bell lines is, but that's something that you're just not going to worry about. Look for the Bugs Bunny on these. There are some double dies, things like that. Repunch mint marks. Look for stuff like that. Then we have a 20th uh, century, 19th century and 20th century typesets. So we'll look at those real quick. And these sets are nice. There's some nice coins in them. I'm, I don't know if I'll sell them as the sets. I might take out a couple coins and replace them because I think there might be a couple in here that I would submit for grading. And the reason I do that is as a dealer, I do make a little more money on the graded coins versus the, it depends on the grade too, but I got to look at them a little bit closer. But that's something I do just kind of make a little more profit on them because I pay as a fair price for the coins ungraded. And when I do that, I have to sometimes send some off just to recoup some of that to make a little more profit on it. So that's typically why I do that. Um, I know a lot of people don't understand that. They think that it's the wrong way to do things, but it works for me. It always has. So here's some nice 19th century coins. You got your half cent, your drape bust half cent there. You've got your large cent, drape bust. This is really cool. So there are some that's missing. It does have the 20 cent piece here. Nice. It's a 75 S, I believe. And the one that appraised this one. Here's the cat bust, half dollar, and seated, half dollar. That's a nice one, but it's cleaned. The barber. And here's the trade dollar, so we have a trade dollar. This one here, I will probably just sell. Uh, I'll probably break the coins up and sell them separate. So thanks for watching the first part of this three-part video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, share, and comment, and get ready for part two and three. And have a great day.